why the AI market is about to hit a wall and how it can be avoided. Let's talk about it. Well, welcome back to AI Insights Innovation, where we talk about the realities of art using artificial intelligence systems, including generative AI, agentic AI, and traditional machine learning. My name is Dave Linthicum, author, speaker, b Geek, and analyst with the Cube Research. Let's get started. So I'm not sure if you've been catching up on the uh, uh, reports of uh, earnings reports from some of the technology providers out there, including the uh, public cloud providers. They're doing pretty good. The public cloud market and traditional hardware is experiencing a growth spurt right now. And largely, and this is admitted to by the CEOs uh, in their annual reports, or excuse me, in their, in their um, readouts to the street, that it's interest in generative AI and AI in general that's driving a lot of this. And so people for the last couple of years have been pushing uh, very quickly to move to generative AI and AI systems. And I think that ultimately that's translating into uh, many sales of cloud-based resources and hardware-based resources. So enterprises are buying resources that they need. So they're leveraging public cloud providers to get access to the resource, and they're leveraging traditional compute systems on-premise, on-prem environments to get to these systems. And for example, according to uh, CEO uh, Andy Jassy, uh, CEO of AWS, he says that uh, Gen AI is growing three times faster than cloud computing did. So in other words, they're seeing a emergence, a quick interest in generative AI, which they're translating into sales, probably to a slightly lesser extent. You know, we're seeing the traditional uh, technology providers uh, with the same sort of growth patterns, you know, such as HPE and Dell, uh, and obviously NVIDIA is exploding right now, serving all the markets. Uh, they're kind of making bank. So it's interesting to see, and it's great great news, that everybody is moving toward this technology and everybody seems to be making money from the move. But things don't always look as they appear. So the big dynamic part of this market is that why we're seeing this growth, we're seeing some issues arise with the ability for enterprises to deploy and use these AI, AI systems uh, to uh, bring value back to the business. And so that's why we're doing this. That's why we implement technology. And so if you look at some of the reports out there, we're seeing some of the, uh, some of the issues arising. For example, Gartner, Gartner reports that 85% of AI implementations fail to meet expectations or are incomplete. And many AI projects started just sort of abandoned. And for many reasons that we're going to go through. But What's going on in the market right now, I think the growth is around uh, these experimentations that are going on, the ability to build prototype systems, their first uh, generative AI system that the IT group is building. Uh, don't know necessarily uh, what they're doing or uh, you know, applying the technology to the correct use cases or trying to figure out the ROI that's coming back. Um, but they are buying resources to do this. So they're buying cloud resources and obviously public cloud providers are going to be the path of least resistance when it comes to things like generative AI because they give you a complete ecosystem on demand. So you give them a credit card and they're able to give you an environment, allows you to develop, deploy, and operate some of these AI systems. The on-prem providers um, don't necessarily have something that's going to be the path of least resistance, but they're moving in that direction. Some of them are offering things like you know, AI public clouds like HPE, where you get a complete suite of software uh, that's going to come in a bundled package that's going to be able to run on-prem, so you're able to get to or achieve many of the same objectives you're able to do in the public cloud providers like AWS, Microsoft, and Google, but do so with the on-prem environment. That's kind of interesting. So why are these AI projects failing? Um, the big reason, uh, and we talked about this in a... Uh, uh, past uh, past show is poor data quality. So data quality is the major factor contributing to the high failure rates of AI projects. We we've just have so many enterprises out there that have kicked the can down the road in terms of fixing their data. They don't have a good understanding in terms of where the data resides, the definition of the data. They don't have a single source of truth. The data that they're maintaining is highly inaccurate. Uh, it has some hygiene issues. All those sorts of things are going to be um, detrimental to you deploying and training an AI-based system. AI eats data. That's how, they, that's how it becomes smart. 
And so if the data that it's consuming for training data is not to the right quality, it's going to fail to meet the expectations of the AI system. And that's happening right now. So what's occurring is that people are making their first inroads into generative AI only to reach an understanding that their existing state of data is not going to be conducive to making these generative AI systems work uh, to the way and to the point where they're able to bring ROI back to the business. You have to remember these things are very expensive. They cost at least two to three times that of traditional environments. They take specialized processors like GPUs. They need a lot of resources. Uh, they need a lot of uh, uh, ecosystem-based components to do the training data, the, the data tuning, the model training, the model tuning, you know, all the things that kind of comes along with AI. And by the way, that's nothing new that's been in the AI space for the last 30 years. And so in understanding that and then seeing the fact that they're not going to gain inroads into building an effective generative AI system, not because the generative AI technology is bad, but because their data is bad. And so they're going to have to loop, loop back and fix their data before they're able to create uh, solid uh, generative AI systems are able to bring, able to solve problems for the business. And that's what we're running into right now. I called it the data wall, but you know, whatever you want to call it, it's that, you know, organizations lacking high quality data sets necessarily necessary for AI deployments. And that's, that's it in a nutshell. And there's no easy fix for this. You're going to have to stop what you're doing, loop back and fix your data. And for many of these organizations, that's a problem that hasn't been addressed for the last 20 or 30 years, and it's going to be a significant, significant expense and significant risk, and someone's going to have to go into the board of directors meeting and tell them we're going to spend you know, $30 million to fix our data before we're able to get into generative AI. Those are tough conversations to have. Uh, so, But I don't think many of them are going to have any choice right now. We have to figure out some sort of an innovative way to do it, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to face the problem. So the other issues are also related to data. Managing high quality data is increasingly complex for enterprises. And so um, data complexity uh, goes along with the same sort of issue that goes along with data hygiene, data accuracy, single source of truth, metadata management, all these things that are missing from many of the enterprise environments. Not all of them out there. There's some enterprises that are doing data rather well, and they're going to be able to step right into generative AI, but they're clearly in the minority. So Technical debt and historical mistakes uh, in data management is really what, at the end of the day, what's what's causing most of the issue. So, in other words, everybody wants to move to generative AI. They may have the budget to move to generative AI. Obviously, they're buying generative AI technology in the cloud and on-prem. They, they just don't have the data that's ready to take them there. But there's some other issues as well. Another uh, secondary concern, we talked about this on the show as well, is lack of skills within the organization to get them to uh, AI systems that are going to bring value back to the business. They can't hire the skills that they need out there. They view it as a, you know, very much a seller's market, and there's not enough people out there who are able to take on some of these bigger AI projects that have the skills and the ability to do that. I'm talking about AI engineers. I'm talking about data science, uh, you know, data scientists. I'm talking about uh, generative AI architects, and I'm building those people right now. And there's a lot of complexity in going through and understanding how that stuff works. And the lack of the skills means that they're unable to hire the skills they need. They don't have the skills to evaluate whether they're, uh, they're getting somebody or not that's going to bring value back to the business. That's a big thing right now. And this shortage in many instances isn't being addressed. So they're just moving forward with uh, people, uh, skill sets that aren't up to par in their ability to build and deploy AI systems. And that's part of the reason you're seeing some of the failures that are out there. So it's, it may not be the data or it may be the, it's, it's the lack of skills or in many instances it's going to be the data and the lack of skills. So Enterprises need to do this in a more proactive way. They need to go out there and change that. You know, in other words, it's not the market's not going to change around them. Uh, obviously, people are going to start moving over to a career path that's going to support AI. But you know, unlike cloud computing and unlike service-oriented architecture and the ability to build containers and microservices-based systems, AI is more complex. It takes a different level of skill. Uh, to do that. And it's very different than traditional application development. So many people have to go through the training 
And I'm not talking about just taking the certification training around learning one cloud provider's AI platform. I'm talking about understanding architecture, understanding data science, understanding AI ethics, understanding model tuning, understanding uh, performance uh, benchmarking, uh, understanding synthetic data, and the ability to kind of get into all these various details that are very different than traditional uh, software development. You know, I went through this in my career as well. I started out as an AI engineer, uh, you know, went into traditional software development, and I've kind of been, you know, between the two, and I've seen the differences. AI is going to be much more complex, much more expensive, but in many instances, if you're able to get the people you need and your data is in, in the correct shape, it's going to bring massive amounts of ROI back to the business. But all those things need to align, and I think that's the problem right now for most enterprises. They don't align. They don't have the data they need, and they don't have the skills they need. So enterprises need to get better at planning. Uh, that's the end of it. If you think about it, um, not understanding the state of your data until you work a uh, generative AI project is, is not the way to do it. It's looking strategically at how your data needs to align with your utilization of this new technology, in this case, generative AI. And the lack of strategic planning, I think, is fundamental to the reason a lot of this stuff isn't working and fundamental to why we're going to see a downturn in the AI technology marketplace in response to the fact that enterprises are going to run into these walls, run into these barriers, and they're not necessarily going to understand how to get around them, and they're going to pause or slow down their consumption of AI technology until they get around them. Uh, by the way, I'm not saying that it's going to decline significantly or crash. I just think it's going to significantly decline in the, uh, in the la level of growth that we're seeing right now. And people are going to wondering why that happens. This is what's happening. In other words, enterprises do not have right now the ability, the skills, and the data to get them into leveraging generative AI in the way they need to get there. Also, they're unable to identify the use cases. They're un unable to identify the ROI for making these things happen. And so that's how it's working. So successful AI implementations require strong foundational elements like data governance and strategic planning. And the enterprises are finding that these things are too costly for many of them to invest in right now. So in other words, they're asked to do things differently than their current infrastructure. So they need to build strong different security mechanisms, governance mechanisms, uh, man model management layers, operational layers, the ability to get into uh, to operate AI systems effectively. And they just find these investments uh, probably too expensive to be made right now. So in other words, they're getting their understanding AI in a lot more detail uh, than they did a couple of years ago. And the whole generative AI thing just kind of exploded uh, and realized that the barriers are going to be too costly for them to move into generative AI at the speed that a lot of people are wanting them to move in that direction, probably an investors, board of directors, CIOs, things like that. So it's, it's not all bad news. I think that if organizations are able to clean and manage their data, they're able to get the skills they need, they're able to do the strategic planning, they're able to map out uh, the use cases and the ability to map it out to the ROI that the business is, gonna, is going to um, leverage, um, you're going to be able to get to uh, a state where you're using AI as a strategic differentiator for your business, able to do something probably your competitors can't, providing a better customer experience, higher productivity, lower prices, more better efficiency, things like that. That's always going to be the pot at the end of the rainbow for AI if you're able to make a lot of these things align. And the divide between where they need to be and where they are now between companies that succeed with AI and those do not are really going to lie in the data, in the skills, in your ability to map it to different kind of business use cases to get the maximum ROI. So if the technology companies, including cloud companies and the on-prem technology companies are going to be uh, hurt uh, during, and during this downturn or, or slower growth cycles, you know, what can they do about that? How can they improve that? I think they can. I think investing in training programs, the ability uh, to give away training, the ability to, um, you know, do mentoring programs to, to get people aligned with businesses so they can understand the strategic planning needs, do the data planning needs, do the skills planning needs, you know, all the things that need to be done that I think um, enterprises are, are either unwilling to do or can't afford to do. And so funding that now, uh, not just when they see the downturn occur, 
um, is going to be something that's going to help a great deal. It's not necessarily going to avoid, uh, I think, the potential downturn that we're going to see. I think many of much of that is inevitable, but it's going to slow uh, slow the ability to get there, and it's going to speed up the ability to crawl out of the downturns. In other words, we're eventually we're going to go in a trough of. Uh, uh, you can't make this stuff work. It's too expensive. Uh, finally figure it out and come out of there with a better understanding of how to make AI work. That may take a year or two years. It's not going to be something you're able to do in a couple of months. And so your ability to be proactive now, technology companies, and get in front of this and sponsor training, uh, you know, pay for um, skills evaluations, pay for data evaluations, pay for data tooling that are able to improve some of these data to make them AI aware um, is going to is going to uh, avoid a lot of these issues. And the more issues you avoid, the better you're going to have a receptive market uh, to buy your technology. So, you know, take that as a hint, spend some money, invest in it, be proactive, get the skill sets improved, get the enterprises a bit more smarter in terms of how they're going to leverage this technology and any deficits that need to be addressed currently in their existing IT infrastructure. So I, I think this is kind of a good news, bad news thing. Uh, the bad news is I think that we're heading for a slowdown uh, because of the reasons that I mentioned, you know, for the last 20 minutes in the show. Uh, and I think that the only way to get around that is going to be to put resources into training, put resources into data management, for, put resources into data assessments, put resources into strategic planning. So enterprises can understand that if the future is going to be leveraging generative AI systems for all this goodness it's able to do within the business, then the hard work needs to occur now, not just when we see that we're running into a deficit and not just as we rank up all these failed AI projects because we're unwilling to go back and fix some of these issues we just talked about. And so it's going to have, it's going to mean having the political will in lots of these organizations to uh, admit to issues that you have and put resources there to fix them, which, not, like I mentioned earlier, is not always a fun conversation to have with your board of directors and your leadership, but I think it's conversations that need to occur. And for the technology companies, it's understanding that they're going to have to help prime the pump for utilization of their technology and get their enterprises, people who consume their technology, and this includes cloud and on-prem stuff, good at AI and good at understanding what needs to change between their existing as a state and what the to be state needs to be. So generative AI is getting traction. Uh, it has a huge amount of potential for businesses. And this isn't really what this show is all about, but I can certainly do an AI show on how to build strategic, innovative differentiators for uh, businesses out there by leveraging generative AI, but lots of work needs to occur. So implementation of AI is going to require solid business cases, uh, solid uh, a data infrastructure, and solid skills. And if you don't have those now, and most people don't, most enterprises don't, now's the time to build them. That's all I'm saying. Well, that's all for this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and also check out our other stuff at the Cube Research, and uh, book, a time, book some time with an analyst and understand your own market and where you are. Uh, whether you're a technology provider or an enterprise out there that's consuming technology, we're happy to help. So until next time, you guys be very safe. Cheers. Bye.